Welcome to Creative Tian channel. This is Shi Tian. Today I'm going to show you how I knit socks using the no sewing side seam technique to make a tube. You can see the link of the last video. Today I'm going to use my LK150 and the sock Wei Yang to knit a pair for five year old boy. So let's get started. Here is the basic drawing for my socks construction. Last time when we did this socks, we start from the calf down. That's this one, calf down. We do show row heel and then continue going to the toe. And that's the button half. And then we go continue going back up, doing the top half of the socks. We're going back to the calf. Every time we only need half of the socks. But today we're going to do the whole round of the socks starting from the calf down. You can do different kinds of calf and I'm just going to put it on the waist yarn and the hand finish or maybe use my reaper on my standard machine and grab it. And you continue down and put half the stitches on hold and we do a show row here and then continue knitting and do another show row that will be the toe print all the stitches on the waist yarn and take it off the machine and when we fold it it will be a complete sock and we just have to grab the toe of the sock to this side and it's best to use a kitchener stitch for this row and we need to do the symmetrical socks for left and right socks because there will be only one seam and the location of the show row doesn't really matter you can have one here and one here if you have one here and the other one here the kitchener stitch will be on the bottom side of the foot last time when we start with the woman's size sock for this construction, we start with 21 stitches. If you want to do this type, you will start with double of that and you will start cast down 42 stitches. And when you show row, you will be 777, just like before. Today I'm going to make socks for five years old. And according to my calculation, it's about 18 stitches on the first type of construction. So the full circle will be 36 stitches. And that's what we will cast down, the 36 stitches. And when we do the show row, half of the 36 is 18, and one third is six, so it will be 666. Six, six. And you can adjust the stitch according to your size. It doesn't have to follow exactly and you can have one stitch more or one stitch less in the middle for the show row too. And so for today's sock knitting, I'm going to use the no sew side seaming. So I'm going to add another ball of yarn that's for closing the seaming so I don't have to sew it later. And to keep it simple, I'm just going to start with waist yarn and plain knitting. For my five year old socks, I will have 25 rows here and 25 rows here. I'm going to use the Patan's Croy Socks Young in the blue color. And I have the tension set to about 2.5 because when I have tension three, it seems a little bit loose. And the upper tension is number three. And I just start with a few rows of waist yarn in a contrasting color and I'm going to thread the main yarn and start knitting my first row. So I have my first row and I'm going to take the secondary yarn. I have a smaller ball of yarn here for seaming the sides and I'm going to knit it together and I show it in my previous video I'll put a link in the corner and in the description box if you want to see more 
So for the opposite side of the carriage, I pull out the needle a little bit and place a yarn. Here is a yarn tail. I place a yarn in the hook and start knitting. I will add a little clip so it doesn't get tangled. I'm going to start knitting my 25 rows of plain knitting. That's for the leg part of the five-year-old socks. And I place this yarn on the outermost needle inside the hook. And then knit one row. And we will continue doing that. For the needle opposite to the carriage, I will place the yarn in the hook. And then knit one row. You will see the loops form in here. That's okay. And we'll just continue this for 25 rows. Now I needed 25 rows. I can start show rowing. And I'm going to put half of the stitches on hold because my carriage is on the left, so I'm going to put this side on hold. You can adjust it by needing one more row or one less row. It doesn't really show much difference. So I pull out all the needle on the right side, the half of the stitch to the D position, the holding position. Change my carriage setting to one here for show rowing. And then we can start our usual show row. And because I have 18 stitches, so I'm going to show row to six stitches in the center. I start with the needle close to the carriage and pull it out. And make sure you have a lot of weight in the middle here so it doesn't pop out the machine. And then the right side, I pull out one needle to the D position, so it's on hold. Just go slowly, two, three, four, Six, now we'll do the reverse show rowing and I like to do the one that's close to the carriage side again pull the needle to the C position so the latch is slightly open and move the yarn below the needle so you can create a rub and reduce any hole okay, and make sure you have enough weight in the center and the right side the right side is always a little bit tight because of all the stitches so I'm going to use my tool to move the yarn below the needle to wrap it Wrap a yarn below the needle. Move it to the C position so it's slightly open. And we just keep going. 
for all the six stitches on each side. See the pocket forming here? Make sure you have enough weight or at least pull it down by hand. Now we finish the show rowing and there's a tendency to have a hole between the show rowing and the holding stitches. So I'm picking up stitch below the last show row stitch and there's a little pro bump or the knot looking and I can place it to the needle so it will close the hole. On the other side I will do the same. See this is a stitch from the needle and below that there's a little bump and I'm going to put that on the needle. Try to minimize the hole. Or you can just weave in some yarns to close the hole after you are done all the knitting. Another thing is this yarn for the seaming I'm going to place to the right side. I'm going to place to the last needle in the latch and make sure we change the setting back to the plain knitting. We are ready to knit one row. Okay, now it's knitted properly. We can continue knitting the foot part and I also have 25 rows for the five-year-old socks so I'm going to continue knitting 25 rows change the counter back to zero put the yarn to the latch on the opposite side of the carriage make sure it doesn't get caught and we need the first row and we place the yarn in the hook again on the far side and need the second row put in the hook on the other side close it a little bit it's easier to knit now I need my 25 rows and we will do the same show rowing on the left side you can do it on the right side it's up to you for now I'm going to put the right side needle on the hole so the right 18 needle will be to the D position and change the setting back to Russell lever 1 on both sides and we'll just do the same as the heel starting show row with the needle close to the carriage and make sure you have enough weight here and we'll reduce until 6 stitch and then reverse show row back to 18 needles so we finished the show row and now I want to make sure we close any holes here and at the edge. So I pick up the bump that's one stitch below and hang it on the hook. And I place this yarn back to the last needle put in the hook and uh, remember to change your setting back to plain knitting and we will need one more row and take it off waist yarn we are pretty much done with the 
machine knitting part. I will knit a few rows of waist yarn and take it off machine. And remember to leave a long yarn tail so you can do the Kitchener stitch on the toe. So this is what it looks like after I put the waist yarn and take it off the machine. This is the back side. There's a lot of loops because I'm going to pull it up to close the socks. And that's the back side. And this is how it looks from the calf down, the short row heel, short row toe. And this is the part we will do a Kitchener stitch. We can put the knitting needle back to the stitches here and here and just do a Kitchener stitch. And for the cuff, I can pick up the stitch here and just hand knit a few rows of the ribbon. The next fun part is to pull all the loops to close the side seam. Here is a yarn end for the seaming yarns and I'm going to pull from here. You can see it start to get closed and I think the trick is to move all the loops to one side so you can see what you are doing and doesn't get tangled. So that's the first one and you can see what's the second one here. You can move it out so it doesn't get tangled with the rest. When you start moving, you can see which yarn is moving. See, that's the second one. And the third one here. You can see this is the third one. That's getting tighter when you pull the yarn. So after I pull all the loops, that's what it looks like. You can still see a little side seam. The good thing about using this technique is that you can have almost continuous stripe. If you have a self-striping yarn like this one. And of course you can do the hand sewing without worrying about all the loops. So here is the toe. I'm going to pick up the stitches. After I pick up 18 stitch on each needle, I'm just going to make sure it's in the right leg. The right side of the stitch is in the front. not knitting just adjust it for the first rung and that goes through the whole rung and then we can start to do the kitchener and after adjusting the position of the leg i can take off the waist yarn to do the kitchener stitch you cut a piece of yarn and uh, first you need to do the setup stitch to set up the first stitch in the front you place the needle pearlwise and thread it through and leave the stitch on and then the back needle we do it needwise and thread it through and leave it on. That's the setup. And then we'll start the repeat and the first stitch you need off the needle. You insert the needle needwise and take it off the needle. And the next stitch is pearlwise. You insert the needle pearlwise and leave it on the needle. And then the back side, the first stitch is the pearl. The first stitch you insert needle pearlwise 
and then take it off the needle. Make sure yarn is below the needle so you don't get tangled. Take the stitch off the needle and the second stitch will be knit. The second stitch will be insert the needle knit wise and leave it on the needle. And we'll start again. We knit the first stitch in the front needle and take it off the needle. And purl wise for the second stitch and leave it on. Purl wise for the first stitch in the back and take it off the needle. And then knit wise for the next stitch in the back needle. And we just keep going knit wise the front of the needle. Pearl wise, stay on. Pearl wise of the needle for the back of the needle. And then knit wise, stay on the needle. We can adjust the tension for all the stitches here just by pulling it with our young needle so it's not too loose and we just keep going until the end to close the hole so I finished the Kitchener stitch that's a row here you cannot really see it and that's the back side and the next thing is just to pick up stitches and do the ribbon it's the same way as my last sock video. I will link it in the corner and in the description below. Just make sure the second sock, the show row location is opposite to the first sock. You might have to add one more row. You might need to hand the seaming yarn to that row too. Thank you for watching today and happy knitting.